Are you tired of your computer being a distraction? Well, macOS Sequoia has built-in tools for productivity and organization. Right off the bat, iPhone mirroring is one of the best tools built right into your computer. All you need to do is have your phone nearby your computer and you go down into the menu bar and click iPhone mirroring. It takes a couple seconds to load and then the screen of your iPhone is then mirrored onto your Mac. I find that I get distracted when I move from my computer to my phone and back and forth and this way I don't even need to pick up my phone anymore. I find this feature great for responding to comments on social media because I'm a lot faster with all of my fingers than with just my thumbs. Once you've linked your phone to your computer for the first time, all of your notifications from your phone are now gonna be mirrored to your computer. So make sure you turn these off on your phone under general notifications and just manually switch off the notifications you don't wanna see. Another great way to stay organized on your Mac is to use the built-in window tiling feature. To do this, just make sure you have it turned on and then take any window on your desktop and just drag it to the edge of your screen. Or you can click and hold the green button at the top of any window and you can pick an orientation from here. It's really fast to organize your windows this way and you can see multiple windows at once instead of having to switch between screens, which I find very useful. This was possible in the past by using a third-party app, but we no longer need that and Windows users, I know what you're saying, you've had this forever, but be thankful that everything is equal now and us Mac users also have this as well. The messages window may look the same as before, but there's a couple features under the hood that you may not know about. There's the option to tap back to any message using any emoji or the option to emphasize any piece of text to get your point across, but we can also now schedule our messages for later. I find this is really useful if I wanna send somebody a message, but maybe it's not the most appropriate time of the day. It's really easy to do this. All you gotta do is click the plus button at the bottom of the screen right beside the messages and hit send later. I'm telling you right now, pre-schedule all of the text messages for your friends and family's birthdays so you don't forget. A couple updates ago, Apple allowed all computers to use the reader view when you're in Safari to simplify the reading experience when you're on the web. And now they've also included an option to remove any distracting elements on any web page. I don't know how they do it, but these things disappear like magic. This is really handy if you're accessing a website really frequently and there's some elements on the website that are really distracting. Or this can be really great if you're sharing a screenshot and you want some elements gone, or if you're doing a presentation and there's maybe some inappropriate ads or just extra stuff on the screen that don't add to the presentation. Apple calendars looks very similar, but there are a couple tweaks in the macOS Sonoma update. The biggest of these is that reminders are now shown in your calendar. These are still two separate apps, but it is handy to have them combined. When you go to make an event, you now have the option to make a calendar event or a reminder right in the calendar app. If you're somebody who uses Apple's reminders, I could imagine that this could increase your productivity, but if you want these to disappear, you can also hide these in the sidebar. Now, I don't know where you keep your passwords. I just hope it's not the same password for every website with just a different variation, but Apple now has a dedicated passwords app in macOS Sonoma. This app is great for storing passwords and suggesting new passwords for any new website that you create a login for. It can also store passwords for your Wi-Fi, which is great if you wanna share them because there's now a QR code that you can display to anybody to share your password. Speaking of sharing, you can easily share any or all of these passwords with your family and all of these passwords are linked between all of your Apple devices, so you're not gonna be forgetting anything. Now there's a couple features in past updates that are not new, but I wanna mention them because I find them very useful. The first of these is universal control. It's wild to me that you can place your iPad next to your Mac and your Mac can take control of your iPad. This is really useful, so your hands don't need to leave your keyboard to operate your iPad, and your iPad can act as a second monitor for your computer. Another one of these features that was introduced years ago is the ability to copy and paste between your Apple devices. You can highlight and copy something on your Mac and paste it on your iPad. It's very simple, but it speeds up my workflow and it keeps me productive. Did you know that just like on your phone, you can place widgets on your home screen? All you need to do is right click on your home screen and click edit widgets. I find this very useful to display information that I'm accessing multiple times a day, like the weather and my to-dos but there's so many widgets you can use here, so find some that work great for you. If I'm using somebody else's Mac, I can't get anything done if they don't have hot corners enabled. I've set up two hot corners on my Mac. One shows me my desktop, and the other shows me all of the windows that I have open. Using these keep me super organized, and they help me navigate my Mac really quickly. 
along with hot corners is multiple desktops. I keep a couple of these open at the same time and I pair together similar apps on the same desktops. So I've got all my music controls and stuff on one desktop, I've got my emails and stuff on another desktop, and I've got my photo editing stuff on another desktop. You can quickly switch between desktops just by using three fingers on your trackpad, or you can use a hot corner to display all of your desktops at once. If you have websites that you access frequently, I recommend you make an app icon for these. Once you've created these, you can easily access these websites straight from your menu bar. And last but not least is not actually a feature that's built into your computer, it's actually a third-party app, and it's called Notch Nook. This app takes the notch on your computer screen and basically turns it into the dynamic island on your iPhone. So if you have music or media playing, it's gonna be displayed up at the top. You can also click on it to see your weather. You can use it as a mirror. It can also be used to quickly airdrop things from your computer to your other devices. It's super handy and I recommend you check it out. It's just one of those apps that I think should be built right into the computer. It's not free, but I do think it's worth the price. You can buy it on their website or you can get it as part of a monthly bundle as a part of SetApp. I'll add a link to SetApp in the description below. Did I miss anything? Is there any features in macOS Sonoma that keep you more organized and productive? Thanks for watching. My name's Davey and thanks for letting me spill the gravy. We'll see you guys in the next one.